along here, you can see in almost all directions, there's a small amount of woods right to the south of us. So you'll see some trees behind us. And then you can walk all along the top of the hill and you can see well off to the east, to the north, and to the west here. And I think there'll be enough light, your eyes will be adjusted, but you'll see there's no light, which is really great in the Vallapusi. There's only one farm light, and so it, it, it's really, it'll be dark, quite dark. How often is anything seen here per night or even per season? A lot. People who do these watches see a lot, but it's always the question, of course, what do they see? There are, of course, people who are constantly saying something, who look exactly at the military training area and then say every night that they've seen flying lights. You have to view that carefully, of course. And have you ever seen anything interesting during a night watch? Yes, in 1994 I saw something. It started to blink in the crop circle, and then everybody, well at least me, and probably others, aimed the binoculars at this light that had blinked in the crop circle. It then just very slowly drew a finger of light there across the field, and in that moment, when the finger of light would have shown what was where it had first blinked, it shot across to the edge of the field, blinked two or three times, and then it was gone. One formation which especially impressed me was a message that everyone in Mexico would have understood. This formation appeared on the 9th of August 2005 and displays the Mayan calendar. It's also called the Tzolkin. It has, among others, a 20-day cycle, which is arranged outside in this figure. On the inside are the four seasons, each with 13 weeks. 20 times 13 makes 260 days, the human gestation period, because the Mayans thought that man didn't orientate himself according to the 365-day cycle, because that is the cycle of the Earth, but instead to his own 260-day cycle as a human. The noteworthiness of the Mayan calendar systems is especially interesting because they don't exhibit an open counting system, instead only a closed one. 20 is the code for individual life, and 13 is the cosmic factor of movement. That means they define their calendrical measurement system in two positions. They always have a calibration point for the beginning, and thereby also always a calibration point for the relevant ending. So 2012 is a big topic. In short, that's when the Mayan calendar ends. Crop circles have also taken up this theme and show the planetary constellation of our solar system around about the 21st of December 2012 in a crop circle here near Avebury Manor in mid-July 2008. Is ended here. A remarkable point ends here, which we are moving to and moving through. And the second stage is actually what we haven't even considered yet, that time is the carrier of information for evolution. In a certain macro structure, we could say that we are moving through a fourth main stage of evolutionary development.
Just like every human being progresses through the phases of childhood and youth, we can also understand here why mental development in the evolutionary process has reached this quality and this standard precisely in this greater cycle in which we now have the finish line. This means that it is fascinating, but nothing extraordinary to people who have come to an understanding, people who understand that reality is multidimensional anyway. When information from another plane copies itself onto our scene, What I've seen the last 15 years and what has happened to my life is that I see the amount of coincidences stacking up. So I'm just meeting the right people, just the right events happen. It's all the right things at the right time. And bit by bit you, you, you recognize there's no coincidence. There's a great, great structure behind that. And somehow you very carefully let into the right direction in this whole strange world. And these patterns help that, do that actually, talk to you inside. I guarantee anybody that comes over here looks at, a, looks at a number of real formations or a number of formations and learns to make a kind of a distinction. I, I, I could almost guarantee they'll go away. The hard facts with, with, regarding this situation are hard facts. You know, they're not sort of flaky claims or, you know, wishful thinking. There are certain facts which people do need to know. Now realize this formation is pretty close to, to the white horse. Now imagine you would make that yourself. You would actually put it closer to the white horse. It's amazing that it is in this beautiful spot, but still it's a little bit away from the white horse, like it's showing respect to it. Even though when I would have made it, I would have made it much closer to the horse. So that's an enigma in itself, actually. And you know, uh, just uh, 24 hours ago, I was in this road thinking about this field because it was so nice, I could see it from there. That would be very nice to have a formation here. It was not here yesterday, it happened overnight. This woman who lives up in the uh, B&B, who runs a B&B out there, yeah. they've, actually, they've actually walked down, the, it wasn't here at half past five in the morning, so that's when she was walking through. So this must have been done sometime after at half past five in the morning today. This is my first encounter on a corn circle, and I'm, I'm sceptic, like, you know. But I've got my views now on it. I don't think it was man-made. Through crop circles, the effect would be that people change their way of thinking, that they open themselves to the unknown and the unusual. Most people are pleased by the phenomenon. It's not a dangerous phenomenon, you know. It doesn't radiate any kind of threat, no violence. On the contrary, it's something beautiful. You're outside in nature. It doesn't matter what you do with it, whether you see aliens in it or messages from nature. It's not primarily about that, but simply an invitation to think differently.